Every time I post a video without fail, the most common question I get asked is, what clippers did you use? For a long time, I have said that it is not the tools, it's the barber. A skilled barber should be able to cut hair with anything. But is that true? I don't know. Today we're gonna to put that theory to the test because I'm gonna buy the cheapest pair of clippers I can find and I'm gonna do a haircut on one of my toughest clients. Let's see what happens. My name is Maddie Conrad. I've been a barber for 27 years. And in that time, I founded a number of barber shops and started a brand called Victory Barber and Brand. I spend most of my time now traveling around the world teaching other barbers all of my tips and tricks on how to be a better barber. Now, I've been featured in a ton of magazines, but most recently, you've probably seen me on GQ's grooming videos. Okay, a lot of you have seen that. And that inspired me to start my own YouTube channel to help you guys with some of my best tips and tricks. So here they are. All right, first up, let's make a stop at the local drugstore. Here, I'm outside of London Drugs. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna find the cheapest clippers that I can find. Let's see what they got. And while I'm hunting around, it would really help me out if you guys could hit subscribe and like for this video. All right, I think we found it. It is the uh, Wall Home Complete Barber Kit for $34.99. It comes with a clipper, a trimmer, and a brow and nose trimmer. Sounds like fun though, let's grab it. All right, I grabbed the Wall Home Complete Barber Kit and I'm gonna take it back to my shop, which is Victory Barber and Brand. It's located here in Vancouver. My friends are already busy at work, so I'm gonna set up my tools. Now this is the tools that I usually use, and these things are pretty expensive. Pro Tools can cost anywhere upwards of about $2,500 for a complete set. But today, the only tools I'm allowed to use are these tools, which we just bought at the drugstore for $34.99. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at them. This is the clipper that it comes with, and while it is cordless, I've got a few concerns. It's really light, and it's missing something that most other clippers have. This lever. This little lever is how you adjust the closeness of the blade. When you set it all the way forward, it's at its shortest, and when you set it all the way back, it's just slightly longer. And this is really important for fading. This clipper doesn't have one. I've also got a couple concerns about the trimmer that comes with this. The blade on it is very small and doesn't look particularly sharp, and it's powered by a AA battery. So I'm not anticipating that it's gonna be very strong. And honestly, what the hell are these things even for? I have legitimately never seen a professional version of something like this, so I don't even really know what to do with it. But I'm 100% committed to using only the tools that came in this kit. Let's see if we can do a quality haircut using only this stuff. All right, so uh, Max, what do you think are my chances of success? You know what, Maddie? Um, it's the barber, not the tools. So, it's the barber, not the tools. The what do we think? I, I think you have a solid chance of fixing what you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. What are your thoughts? Is this going to work out or what? Yeah, I agree. It's the barber, not the tools. Let's go. What do you think? I, I wish you luck. <laughs> <laughs> And here he is. This is Ravash, and he actually is my toughest client, not because he's not a nice guy, he's actually incredibly nice, but his hair is really thick and he has high contrast, which means his hair is really dark and his skin is really light, so it's gonna show everything. But if anybody's gonna be a good test to see if these tools hold up, it's gonna be him. So let's get started. The set came with this barber cape, so I'm gonna use that, I'll just take that out of the bag. Kind of feels like a thick trash bag with a hole in it and a piece of Velcro. But it came with the kit, so that's what we're using. Oh yeah, that feels professional. Not exactly great coverage, but here we go. Normally when I start a skin fade, I start with my clipper set all the way to zero. This is just a really nice way to create a soft line that's not gonna be hard to remove later. But I wanna see how close this one gets. Looks like not very. Either way, I'm just gonna continue this line all the way around the back, and clipper's not terrible. It means cutting the hair short, just not quite as short as my regular clipper. And uh, if I just nice and thorough with it, it should be okay, but I'd still like to get this uh, quite a bit tighter down, so I think I'm gonna have to go to the other tool here, the trimmer, 
which again is a double A battery. So let's see how long this thing lasts. But if I take this and use it against the skin, it should technically get much, much shorter. Let's see how that does. All right, so it's getting a tiny bit shorter, but nothing super noticeable. Usually a trimmer is gonna take things really close down, like down to almost the skin. So I'm just gonna keep going over this thing, but I think this is an area where this set's gonna struggle. And well, it looks like that's about the best we're gonna get, so let's move on. The set came with an assortment of guards, so I'm gonna attach the 1.5 guard here, and then I'm gonna start working down through the middle of his fade. Now because this clipper doesn't have a lever, I'm going to adjust my cutting style slightly and I'm going to use a lot more of a C-stroke or a wrist motion when I work. This is going to allow me to blend to the longer lengths above when I don't have that little lever for control. God, this comb sucks. But quite surprisingly, this clipper is not doing a terrible job. It doesn't have the finite control, but seems to be cutting pretty clean. Let's see how it does when we take things just a little bit shorter. I'm going to put on the one guard and start blending that out. To do that, I'm basically taking a shorter length, just slightly below the line that I've already created and using lots and lots of wrist motion to blend upwards. And in all honesty, I'm kind of surprised at how well this thing is working. I mean, just because of the price alone, you would expect this thing to be a complete piece of garbage. I was expecting it to be god awful. And this thing is, it's not awful. It's just not good. And here's where that gets put to the test. This is definitely gonna be the trickiest part, is trying to blend out the bottom line on a fade without a lever. This is where the lever becomes pretty necessary because it's that micro fine adjustment that really helps you blur that line out and make it blend really smooth. Now, because I don't have that, I'm gonna use some corner blending techniques to try and smooth that out. Well, it's certainly not the best fade I've ever done, it's also not the worst. Let's move on to the top by spraying it down with the world's tiniest spray bottle, which was also included in the kit. Oh man, this is gonna take forever. Let's just skip ahead. Let's try out some clipper over comb. I mean, the comb that came with this set is absolute garbage, but let's see how it does blending out this corner. The trick to good clipper over comb is you want the clipper and the comb to remain in contact. You really do just want to run that thing along there like a train on a track. The value of a good comb here cannot be understated. Now, I usually like mine to be not very flexible. You can see this one bends pretty bad. I don't really think that this is the fault of the clipper. I think this is just a bad comb. Well, let's keep moving. Now this is something I have some very serious doubts about. That is easily the cheapest pair of scissors I've ever seen in my life. Let's give them a shot. Now the reason hair scissors are usually so expensive is because they have to keep a very, very sharp edge. Hair is a surprisingly difficult substance to cut through. A professional pair of shears needs to be really sharp. These ones, well damn, I got a straight line with them. But here is an area where they definitely struggle. Scissor over comb is a technique that barbers and hairstylists use to blend shorter lengths and are able to control with their fingers. And these are definitely not making an easy job of it. But all in all, this haircut hasn't turned out too bad. Let's style it up, get some of the finishing work done. Just gonna grab some primer, add a little bit of that to hair to make his hair feel a little thicker, a little fuller. It's actually one of my favorite products to use in my clients. I'm just gonna give this a quick blow dryer. It really helps activate the product. And if you're looking for a little bit more volume and height on top, I highly recommend it. All right, now it's time to use this thing. Honestly, I don't even really know what this thing is for, but what the hell, let's give it a try. Essentially what these things are meant to do is just remove the really fine hairs around your face, things that are growing around your eyebrows and sometimes the upper part of your cheeks. Also good for those little fine hairs on the end of your ears. What I discovered that they're absolutely not good for is trying to outline your haircuts. No matter how fine a hair these things are meant to cut, they're absolutely not good for outlining haircuts or shaving any kind of thicker hair down to the skin. In all honesty, as far as I can tell, these things are a complete waste of money. 
All right, after a valiant attempt at a haircut, this is definitely where the tools are gonna get put to the test. Ravi has a very thick beard and it's not easy to trim. I'm gonna start with the baseline and try to get that nice and straight while I'm cleaning up the hair underneath his chin, I'm trying to get something that looks nice and smooth. It's not actually doing a terrible job, but when it comes to beard hair, it can often be a lot thicker and coarser than the hair on your head, so this is an area where a clipper requires quite a lot of power. I'm gonna taper up the sides using a number two guard and working my way slowly shorter until we blend it out. Again, this is an area where a lever would be really handy, but unfortunately, because I don't have one, I'm just gonna have to use more of a flicking motion with my wrist and try and use that to blend it down. To get that final line out, I'm gonna need to go back down to the trimmer and just get rid of that little bit of a shadow. Time for outlining, and it really doesn't seem like this little trimmer's up to the task. Normally with a trimmer, you should just be able to press very lightly and create a nice, clean, crisp line, but this one I have to keep going over and over and over again. And this is gonna take a minute. It's time to set the top line, which is usually a nice clean line from the corner of the sideburn towards the side of the mouth. Now, this is an area where having a really sharp trimmer comes in very handy. Unless you're super skilled with a straight blade, it's really difficult to get this nice straight line in there, especially using this trimmer. Ugh. I'm gonna flip the trimmer to its natural position to clean up the hair on his cheeks, and then I'm just gonna clean up the top of his mustache, making things nice and tidy. As far as I'm concerned, a trimmer is really only designed to do two things. Number one, it's meant to make nice clean lines and sharp outlines. Number two, it's meant to shave hair really close down to the skin. This trimmer seems to do neither of those things well. So let's go back to the scissors and see how they do at refining and polishing up a beard. Kind of feels like I'm cutting hair with a pair of Fisher Price My First Scissors. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit of styling product and then we're gonna go back to the kit and use the embarrassingly small mirror that they've supplied so I can show him the back of his head. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's see what he thinks. Well, he likes it, and that must prove that it's the barber and not the tools, right? Well, not exactly. As far as clippers go, this is not bad, but it's not really good either. I mean, I'm certainly not gonna replace any of the tools in my shop with it. To be honest, cutting hair with it was very difficult, but it ultimately didn't do a bad job. And maybe the distance between a good clipper and a bad clipper is not as far as we think. However, this, on the other hand, was god awful, and I never ever want to see it again. As a trimmer, this thing was absolutely pathetic. It did not shave hair down close enough. It couldn't outline. And I would never ever let a client of mine walk out of the shop looking like this. So it led me to understand that for guys at home, having a good trimmer is probably more important than having a good clipper. Oh God, and then there's this thing. Like honestly, I tried with this thing to get as close to the skin as I could and it was just useless. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a piece of junk that is just destined for the garbage. So I think what we've discovered in this video is that it's not the barber or the tools, it's both. And that the most important quality about any haircut is whether or not he likes it. I like it. All right. And that's really all that matters. All right, guys, if you like my content, remember to subscribe and click like. Leave your comments below to let me know what videos you guys want to see. And until next time, good luck and good grooming.